Hey everybody, I'm here to introduce how to define a world for your Big Bang program. Defining a world definition is the first step in designing a Big Bang program. By defining a world definition, we automatically know the signatures of the Big Bang functions we will have to implement. A comment like, a world is, with the description of the world, will be at the beginning of your Big Bang program. Deciding what a world definition should be isn't always easy, but hopefully seeing a few examples of different Big Bang programs will help. Let's start with our increasing square example, like we defined in previous videos. The first thing to note about any Big Bang program is the elements that are constant versus the elements that are changing. Often, the elements that are changing make up the world definition. Your first thought may be that this world is an image, since the image of the square is changing. However, this idea is almost never correct. Images are hard to extract certain information from, and thus it is never recommended to make your world an image. However, what specifically is changing about the increasing square program is the size of the square. The size of the square is represented as a number. Thus, we can say a world is a number. And then we can say that this number represents the size of the square. As you can see, our draw square and increase num follow the idea that the world is represented as a number. We can now change our signatures to world to image and world to world. These signatures will stay the same for any Big Bang program with a to draw function and an on tick function, no matter what type of world we have. Let's look at another example. This time, we have a car moving across the screen. Let's note that the image of the car doesn't change and neither does the size of the screen. These would be good constant definitions to have at the top of your program. Again, to discover what the world could be, let's examine the changing aspects of this program. This time, the image is not changing size, but moving across the screen. Thus, the position of the image is changing. More specifically, the horizontal position. The horizontal position of any image on a screen is the x-coordinate. Thus, we can say that a world is a number, and that this number represents the x-coordinate of the car. We will definitely need a toDraw function, which has the same signature as any toDraw function. And since the image of the car is moving, the x-coordinate is changing on every tick, just as the increasing square was changing size on every tick. Thus, we need an onTick function, which has the following signature, as all onTick functions do. The program is not affected by key or mouse movements, thus we will not need these functions. Let's move on to another example. This time, we have a rocket slowly landing on the bottom of the screen. Again, note that the image is not changing, and neither is the screen size. The rocket image is changing position just as the car was, but this time, it is the vertical position that is changing. This vertical position is represented as the y-coordinate on an image. However, the y-coordinate in images has zero start in the top left corner. Thus, to make the rocket go down, the y-coordinate has to increase. Thus, we can write a world as a number and that this number represents the y-coordinate of the rocket. Again, we will need a toDraw and an onTick function with the following signatures. We need this onTick function to make the y-coordinate increase as time passes, making the rocket descend. If we press the spacebar in this program, the rocket actually goes ahead and lands on the bottom of the screen, as so. Thus, we need a function to work with keyboard events. I went over key event functions in a previous video. This key event function will have the following signature as all key event functions have. It takes a world, a key event, and outputs a world. This function will only change the world, the y coordinate, whenever the key event is the spacebar being pressed, which is represented as a string with a space in it. Let's move on to a final example. This looks like a program that just places an image of a cat on the center of the screen. But, if I move my mouse across the screen, the cat follows the mouse. Again, note that the image of the cat doesn't change, and neither does the size of the screen. These are our constant definitions. The position of the cat does change, however. And this position is not just the horizontal or vertical position, it is both. Thus, the world must now be two numbers representing the horizontal and vertical position. We have a convenient built-in structure called a POSIN that takes two numbers representing x and y coordinates. Here are the constructor and accessor functions of this POSIN structure. Thus, the changing elements of this program is the horizontal and vertical position of the cat, which can be represented with a POSIN structure. 
However, as you can see, my mouse position is also changing. Thus, it would be convenient to store both the current cat position and the mouse position so the cat can move towards these mouse coordinates. We can define our own structure to hold two posins, one posin being the cat position and the other being the mouse position. Here we've defined a world to be a make world posin posin. The first posin represents the cat position, the second posin represents the mouse position. We get our two drawn on tick signatures as before. The on tick function moves the cat coordinates closer to the mouse coordinates. This time, since the cat follows the mouse, the program must react to mouse events and thus must have a mouse event function to do so. I covered mouse event functions in a previous video. The signature of this function is the same as any mouse event function. It takes a world, a number, a number, a mouse event, and outputs a world. Remember that the two numbers in this signature represents the x and y coordinates of the mouse event. Thus, provided that the mouse event is moved, we can update the world with the new mouse coordinates. I hope this video with lots of Big Bang program examples helped, and until next time.